So let's kick it off. So folks, thank you so much for joining us in this session. Uh, this is a kickoff session to what's going to be a weekly series from us at Stream Alive. It's, it's a live from Stream Alive session where each session we'll, we hope to educate you, entertain you, have fun, or, or, or if not anything else, just have fun, right? And then that's really the objective today as well. So let's have fun. Let's enjoy this. Uh, I'm Lux Narayan. I'm the CEO and a co-founder at Stream Alive. Uh, but this session is about when and what she's going to be teaching us. So a uh, quick introduction. I've had the pleasure of, of knowing Gwen for, uh, it's almost three years at this time. We started off as co-students and now, and then we became colleagues in a way, and, and we're more importantly friends. Uh, this map is a good representation. We met online during the pandemic. Gwen lives in Spain, is from Canada, and most recently, uh, my co-founder and wife Tina and I, we met Gwen in New York when, when, when she was here for an alumni event. So uh, Gwen, is, Gwen is everywhere. Chances are she'll be in your city at some point. Um, just to give you a quick introduction to her, she is a facilitator and an experienced designer. And her mission is to help online professionals design and lead engaging online sessions. So you'll know if she's done a good job uh, based on how I'm, I'm, I'm leading the session for now, but I'm going to give it over to her very, very soon, right? So she's worked in facilitation for about 20 plus years. And in the last three years, for very, very obvious reasons, about 1,000 hours of those has been live online sessions uh, for community platforms like, like Circle, the International Association of Facilitators, and others. Those of you who are in the cohort-based ecosystem have probably heard of Billy Brewers, David Perrell's Rite of Passage, where Gwen is a mentor, uh, and Andrew Barry at, at Curious Lion, and Gwen has worked with all of them. Uh, if you've attended any of those sessions, you probably had her, um, you know, in your sessions, or if you're even luckier, had her as a mentor in one of your sessions. She writes a weekly newsletter called The Quest. I can't recommend it enough. At the end of the session, we'll send you links uh, within an email afterwards to make sure you can you can find that and subscribe to it. She leads a five-week immersive course called Breakthrough Facilitation, happening later this year. Happens multiple times a year. I'm sure she'll share more more details on that. But without further ado. Uh, I'm going to stop the map now. So if you didn't have a chance to put your put your city in, this is your last chance before we go. Three, two, one, and Gwen, over to you. Take it away. Great. Well, thank you so much, Lux and and Tina. I'm so honored to be the first uh, showcase session uh, facilitator for Stream Alive. And Lux, had you told me three years ago that a chance encounter in a breakout group in an online course would lead to us being here today, showcasing your amazing uh, software. I wouldn't have believed you, but that is really what is possible now when we work and we learn um, online. So this is why one of the reasons I'm so excited about it. Um, so hi, everyone. I am Gwen, and uh, thank you for taking the time to be in this session today. And it really is truly amazing to see so many people joining from so many parts of the world. We've got most of the world covered, and I noticed that there are a few people joining in from the west coast of the United States very early in the morning to India, where it is already in the evening. So thank you for joining. And one of the ways that I le love to start uh, my online sessions um, is with something that we call a chat storm. And this is something that I learned from a facilitator called Cam Hauser. Um, and so let's queue up in the chat the way that you would say hello to a really good friend where you're from. We'll queue that up. And on the count of three, we'll press send all at the same time. Okay. So the way that you would say hello to a very good friend where you're from. Let's type that in the chat. I'm going to do that as well. Uh, and are we ready to go? Three, two, one, let's press send and see what comes up. Wow. Oh. <laughs> so many different ways of saying hello in, in just in this group that we have here with us today. And I'm going to have to get my Google Translate out to to um, see some of these greetings that I am not even familiar with. So thank you. And a kiss with both cheeks. Yes, I would add that to here in Spain as well. <laughs> Wonderful. So um, I love the chat storm because it does remind us that even if we're not in the same physical place, we are sharing a moment in time. 
And so here we are in the Zoom session. Let's, I know a few of you have your cameras on. If it's possible for you, I'd invite you to turn your cameras on. Let's put ourselves in gallery view. And I invite you just to turn on your mics and say hello to this group in the very same way that you would say hello to that good friend. So let's just unmute ourselves and say, Hola, guapas. Namaskar. Mabuhay. Wonderful. So it is fantastic to see you and also to hear you. Um, so to get a better idea of who is in this Zoom room, I'd love to get a sense of what kind of sessions, online sessions do you lead? You know, webinars, online courses, team meetings, live streams. And if you don't lead live sessions, you can just write in the chat, I don't lead live sessions, hopefully yet, uh, because uh, there's a whole world there waiting for you, an exciting uh, world of leading live sessions if you don't already. So let's write in the chat, what kind of sessions do you lead? And that is going to start coming up on our screen. So we've got one not yet, great. We'll, we'll hopefully by the end of the session, you'll be jazzed to, to start trying it out. Team meetings, online courses and meetings, webinar cohort-based courses, uh, Instagram reels, webinars, uh, team meetings, facilitation, one-on-one -on -one meetings and all hands online and offline um, and group meetings for courses, team meetings. So here we have a whole range of different daily stand-up. Oh, neat. Okay. Um, and love these colors. Aren't they beautiful? So we can see all the different kinds of sessions that we lead as a group um, that range, you know, in, in, in a number of different ways. Whatever kind of session you lead, the aim of our session today is to equip you with a few digital tools with Stream Alive and facilitation techniques so that you can increase engagement in your live sessions. So here's what we're gonna do today. We're gonna share the, uh, oh, and by the way, we will share all of the, the slides that come up on the screen post session. So don't worry about taking screenshots or uh, if you um, if you don't want to, they will be sent to you in an email afterwards. So here's what we're going to do today. Um, Lux, if you wouldn't mind pulling up the agenda, we are going to showcase seven different kinds of stream alive interaction. So you've already seen a couple of those, the maps and the, the transient thoughts. Um, so we're going to take you through all of these amazing interactions that Streamlive can offer us as people who lead online sessions. We're gonna reveal some engagement tips and tricks, and then I'll share a framework for increasing engagement in your sessions. As we go, um, please write any questions that you have in the chat as they come to you. You don't have to wait for the Q&A at the end. These are going to be captured in an amazing tool called Quick Questions, which is an AI powered tool that scans the chat for questions and brings them all together so we can come back to these a little later on in the sessions. I do see a question here. Will the recording be sent also, Lux and Tina? Absolutely. Yes, it will. Okay. Okay. Fantastic. It's interesting. It's pulled up uh, some of the hello questions that people put up in response to your first prompt. So, so. It's, it's, it's great fun. You can see that. <laughs> awesome. That's how we're doing in all these different languages. Okay, good. So um, let's now go to a poll. So I would love to know on a scale from one to four, how comfortable do you feel leading online groups? So number one is um, I am way out of my comfort zone. And number four is I'm in my element when I'm leading online groups. Now, just keep in mind, there's no experience or comfort level required to be in this session. So just feel free to choose a number, which one resonates most with you. And if you don't lead online sessions yet, just pick uh, pick anyone that, that, seems, that seems right. Okay, so great. We have... 
yeah, we have a few people who, for whom, yeah, leading live sessions is way out of my comfort zone. Yeah, absolutely. And it's uh, hopefully, again, in this session, we're going to move you just, you know, the confidence level just a, uh, slightly so that uh, you have that confidence to start engaging people in live sessions. So I've led a few live sessions with varying success. I'm comfortable leading live sessions, but I want to learn more is the most popular answer in this group. And I am in my element when leading live sessions. Fantastic. So my, again, my desire is that with the techniques that you learn in the session, you'll feel just that little bit more confidence, increasing engagement in your live sessions, wherever your comfort level is right now. So when I switched to facilitating online sessions three years ago, I felt completely out of my comfort zone because I had been leading in-person groups for 15 years. And frankly, I didn't believe that you could do the same kind of meaningful work online as you could in person. And then I led my first online session. Um, and I and it was in that session that I had a breakthrough moment. And I realized through the way that people were interacting that it is possible to do meaningful group work online. But there was one thing that I realized, and that was that online sessions need to be designed and facilitated specifically for the way that we interact in the virtual space. So I know that leading online meetings can be frustrating and it can be a struggle to keep people engaged, um, but it can also be rewarding, productive and meaningful and fun. And the fact that you are all here spending an hour with us today tells me that you may have experienced a little bit of the magic of working and learning online. Um, and so how can we bring more of that into our live online sessions? That is what we are going to explore today. So in order to understand how to increase engagement, let's first look at some of the challenges of leading online sessions that we face as a group. Um, and so I invite you to write in the chat, what are the biggest challenges that you face when leading online sessions, whether it's the webinar or the team meetings, the all hands, the courses, whatever you lead. And you can write as many challenges as you want. Um, just use a separate chat box for each one. And then we'll see these start to come up on, this, on the screen. So as you're doing that, great. So yeah, distracted people and multitasking and sustaining energies. And just uh, one quick thing to note, Lux, should we just quickly announce the bonus now? Oh, yes, absolutely. Okay, just, to, just as a little side note to say thanks to you for coming out today. I will be giving away a one hour coaching session into this group um, where we can work any th through any of these challenges that you have. So if you write your challenge in this um, in this part of the session, then you'll have a chance to win that coaching session. So back to this, these challenging, these challenges, yes. Balancing the process and the content and getting people to come off camera. Um, yes, bringing people together. And sometimes it's hard to read the room, switching, cameras switched off, transfer of learning, ensuring audience are not multitasking, yes. <laughs> Generating meaningful insights, absolutely, and designing an experience. Nina, um, through everyone, though everyone loves the breakout groups, I groan when I now they groan when I announce we're doing it. Yes, experience flow, Danilo. And uh large group sizes where everyone does not fit one group. Yes. Um, encouraging next steps. Okay, this awkward transitions. Uh, managing and celebrating conflict and not noticing someone who may be silent and not calling on them. All of these, thank you for sharing those challenges. Those are not easy challenges to um, face when you are on live in an online session. I want to tell you that you are not alone. I have faced every single one of those challenges that you have named. And it turns out that there are 10 very common struggles that faced by people who lead online sessions. And many of these you have already, um, you have already identified. 
in your challenges. So I'll just leave that up and th those will come through to you on uh, with the slides. But the good news is that there are facilitation techniques that will help you with every single one of those challenges. And so I, you know, we what we've done so far, we've done, you know, the map and and the little poll, it might look fun and superficial, but the truth is that everything that we have done has a purpose behind it. And that purpose connects to the way that we are wired to engage. So let's lift the curtain right now. And as a group, I know there's a lot of facilitation experience in this group. You, you're leading all kinds of different uh, live online sessions, or maybe you've been in a lot of live online sessions and you know what doesn't work. Um, but let's lift the curtain now and try to identify the facilitation techniques that have been running in the background of this session. And so my question to you is what has made you in this session want to engage? And let's write this in the chat and let's see as how many we can come up with as a group. And again, just write, write one idea per text box. Let's see if we can get to 20, 20 different facilitation tools and techniques that have been running in the background. Fabulous. Okay, here we go. We are well on our way to, to 20 and we probably will be surpassing that. So word cloud, interactivity, learning new tips, the tool, stream alive, poll, uh, learning new tricks, mostly curiosity, fun to see my ideas, learn to facilitate a better live session, unmuting the Tetris blocks. Yes, aren't these fun? Um, Gwen and Lux are so warm and engaging. Thank you. Um, the colors and um, the map and the Tetris colors. Yes, facilitator. So we, fantastic. I think we're well beyond, we are well beyond 20. Amazing. Talking tiles. Okay, fantastic. Um, while we do this, would someone like to just turn on their mic and share with us what made you want to engage with this session so far? Would somebody like to, and if you would like to, if you can just put in the chat me and Tina will call on you. Would somebody just like to share with us? And if this is feels like a little scary, the butterflies in the stomach are you know, going a little bit crazy, that is actually a good sign to just put me in the chat and we'd love to hear from you. What made you want to engage in this session? Okay, we've got yeah. Rahul. Rahul. All right. Uh, can you hear me? Yes. Yeah. So I, I think for me, it's the Tetris blocks. It's it's just the you know you can sense that there's a lot of conversations going on on the side, and the fact that they are all being collected and put in front of you, and you don't need to worry about that, and you can focus on what you want to do with that information. I think that was great. Nice. Wonderful. Thank you, Rahul. Great. Nina, do you want to share what made you want to engage in the session? Um, so I uh, absolutely agree with Rahul that um, just being able not to have to focus on the chat box, it's so distracting and being able to see everything up front for sure. I'm loving this software. And I'll be very honest and say, I want to win the session with Gwen. I'm very <laughs> honest. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, absolutely, Nina. Um, not to focus on the chat. You know, there's so much that goes on in the chat, which has been the one of the big gifts of Zoom and, and this kind of online facilitation is the chat. This is the whole narrative that when you're in person, you it does not surface in the same way that it does online. And at the same time, it can be very distracting. It can be distracting for you as the person who leads, and it could be distracting for your participants. So the real genius, as far as I'm concerned, from a facilitator point of view of, G of Stream Alive, is that it takes all of that valuable content from the chat, and it and it helps us incorporate that into engaging, you know, our groups in in our sessions in a really easy and frictionless way. Okay, fantastic. 
So we've got some of the ingredients and I, you've named a lot of the, um, the there's, there's both the tools that Stream Alive is giving us. And it's also, you know, somebody mentioned uh, Lux and Gwen, I think they said, um, you know, kind of were warm and, and uh, energized. I can't remember exactly the, yes, Gwen and Lux are so warm and engaging. Okay. So beyond the tools, there are things, and thank you for that. Um, beyond the tools, there are facilitation techniques as well. So it's, you know, other things having to do um, with how you show up as a facilitator. Um, and one of the things that we know about online facilitation, it's that your energy um, that would come across in person doesn't come across quite in the same way. In fact, like, you know, if you kind of come through with 80% of your energy in a live session, in a in-person session, that translates into about 40% of your energy in a, in a, the same way of presenting. So you want to find a way of communicating that energy and excitement to your group, which then has the impact of making them want to engage with you and your session. Um, there are lots of different things that we have, uh, that we've identified. So, um, let's go now to, let's go now to the breakthrough arc framework. Okay. So here is the, the, the we've got some of those ingredients that make for an engaging session. We've, we've talked about um, the tools, the facilitation techniques, the, you know, how you show up as a facilitator, but how do you put those ingredients together to really um, create engaging sessions? You need a recipe and online facilitation has evolved so quickly that there hasn't actually been a reliable recipe. So I created one and it's a framework that I call Breakthrough Facilitation Arc. It's the, it's the framework that I use to design and facilitate all of my online sessions. And it lays out the eight steps for designing and leading high engagement sessions again and again. Now this arc is inspired by the work of two very visionary organizations. One is Dream a Dream in India and Partners for Youth Empowerment, which is an organization I used to work with. Um, and along with one of my uh, dear facilitation mentors, Nadia Cheney. Um, the arc is a very familiar shape. You might be familiar, for example, with the story arc, where there's a beginning, a middle, and an end. And I wonder, Lux, if you can um, go back to the story arc. There it is, okay? So, um, that is an arc that, that is quite familiar if you've seen any Netflix series or movies or even, you know, books and novels often follow that story arc. The arc is also used in experience design and transformative learning. So the idea that your audience goes from a current state to a new and better state is um, one of the ways that um, experience designers, for example, look at how they they design uh, experiences. So if you just to give you an example, in this session, when I was thinking about, you know, when we were thinking, we were planning about what what is the transformation that we want for this group? And it's from feeling like virtual leading virtual sessions is a struggle to having some new tools and maybe some confidence to increase engagement in your online sessions. So, um, and neuroscience tells us that once people experience this shift, there's no going back, that actually we forge new neural pathways um, through these kinds of experience. So um, let's go to the next slide that the behind the breakthrough arc, there's kind of these three phases um, for designing highly engaging sessions. And the first one is creating safety. So that safety where people feel like they belong, that they feel like they can contribute without being judged. 
that opens the, the gateway for um, people to be able to challenge their assumptions and their limiting beliefs so that they can see new possibilities that were not there before. So those are the three phases of the, of the breakthrough facilitation arc. Then I was thinking, how do you take those phases? How do you take those elements and really um, come up with something that would help you design consistently a repeatable, a repeatable process that you could use to design consistently highly engaging sessions? And that is where the breakthrough art comes in. So if we go to the next slide, Lex, they, these are the eight steps. So preparation, welcome, connection, context, main activity, reflection, commitment, and closing. And through those eight steps, you move your audience through a transformation where they've experienced that shift through your session. So I'm gonna run very quickly through these steps. Um, we are going to share a link to a free guide that explains the Breakthrough Arc that has also a worksheet that has questions and ideas that you can use to apply this Breakthrough Arc to your live sessions. I teach a whole five week course on the Breakthrough Arc. So there's a lot of, of uh, <clears throat> different elements and nuances, but I wanted to share with you in this session today as we talk about engagement, at least the overview of the arc, and then you can have this uh, worksheet to take away. And I'll just put the, um, we'll put the, the, the link in the, in the, uh, in the chat. Okay. So um, moving to the next slide to the first phase of like creating safety. So if you think about, uh, again, kind of back to our session as a living example of this process, the first phase is preparation. But what I mean by that is designing for your audience, your purpose and the transformation that you want to have for you want your audience to have in your session. All of your design decisions are then guided by your what I call APT, audience, participant, purpose, and transformation. Then we've got the welcome. The, that is where you create the tone and you get all voices heard from the get-go. Step three is connection. And that is giving your audience an opportunity to connect early and often throughout your session. Step four is context. So this is where you orient your audience and you build trust. This is usually where you introduce yourself. You, you share potentially you know, some of the struggles that you have had with your audience. You share the aim of the session, the um, agenda, and you help to orient your audience. Then step five, then we go into the next phase after creating safety. And if we go to the next slide, we'll see the that opens, you've created safety, you've uh, built bonds and connections amongst your group members, you move into the next phase, which is giving your, your audience members an opportunity to challenge their assumptions. So your main activity, it could be uh, a presentation, it could be a um, ideation session, it could be a strategy uh, discussion. Whatever that main activity is, you want to balance content and interaction. And it's very easy at that point to default into talking mode. Um, and what you want to do is kind of punctuate your content with opportunities for your audience to interact. Then there is the reflection, which is step six. And you may be tempted to just skip over this part. Don't do it. Because building in the time for reflection is where you draw out insights and you um, open the opportunities for people to have breakthroughs um, in whatever kind of challenges that they are working through. So um, step seven, like, that's the challenging assumptions. Then we move to the last phase, which is opening new possibilities. And that is step seven commitment, making it easy for, for people to take action on what they have learned in the, the session and ending your, your step number eight, which is one of the most important steps because the ending is often the most memorable part of a whole online experience. And this is this final step is your opportunity 
to get all voices heard one more time and to end on an emotional high. So that is the breakthrough arc. There it is. If you want to take a screenshot, uh, there is a lot in the breakthrough arc. I have done a whiz through of, of an overview, but I wanted to share that with you. Take a look. Um, you can download the free guide and, uh, and that will give you more opportunities. So I just wanted to give you a moment to take a look at that breakthrough arc. Think about your own sessions and write in the chat, what is one thing you could do, you could do to increase engagement in your own sessions? So just take a moment. What is one thing that you could do to increase engagement in your own sessions? Let's see, from all of the things that we have talked about and experienced today in, in our session. One thing. Great. Quinn, did you want me to run an interaction for that? Or we'll just run it off the chat, whatever you I like. Think, uh, let's just it's run it off the chat. chat. Yeah, good. yeah, great, okay. And if you don't mind a uh, quick interruption, I just want to jump on your point three, which is connection. Yes. And uh, just request anybody, if if you have a website or uh, something else that you do that you'd like to put the spotlight on and to share with everyone on this group, uh, any link you want, whether it's your LinkedIn profile, your Twitter profile, your website, feel free to put it in the chat. Uh, Stream Alive automatically curates it. And after the session, we'll be sharing a document with all the links that anyone has shared. So anything you want to put a spotlight on and want others to follow your work on, feel free to share it. We'll share it with everyone who's attended the session. Again, it's entirely up to you. Could be your LinkedIn profile, your Twitter handle, uh, a book you've written, a website you have, a course you run. It's it's up to you. Back to you, Gwen. Great. Okay. Fantastic. So all of these things that, it, that Stream Alive enables, like the link sharing and the and uh, all of this uh, amazing stuff. Okay, so ending, uh, Dr. Ramya, ending on an emotional high. Yes, Susan, make sure all the voices are heard. Yeah, and, and that turning on the mic at the beginning of the session is a very easy way of accomplishing that. Obviously, there are more, more uh, you know, um, meaningful ways to get voices heard and important ways throughout your session. But that is one that really, brings the voices in um, very quickly and in a, a very simple way. Balancing content and interaction. Yes, orient and build trust. Make it very interactive and make it easy to include everyone in the group, both the shy and the brash. Yeah, Tina, absolutely. Nina, add time for reflection. Need to end on that emotional high. Yes. Um, fantastic. I've started, yeah, Kevin, thanks for sharing that. I've started to following your advice of making the closing important. And that definitely has helped. I think for me, one area I'd like to improve is to make the welcome more inviting and prime people for participation in the Q&A. Yes, fantastic. Well, thank you very much for sharing those, uh, those ways that you are, are already thinking about applying what we've learned in this session to your, um, to your own live online sessions. Wonderful. So I see some people sharing their links. That's great. Um, and yes, and I, I do encourage you. I mean, like I was saying, Lux and I met in a chance encounter in a breakout group uh, three years ago. And you never know what kind of connections and collaborations come from um, this work that we do online. So let's open it up for some questions at this time. And so if you would like to un unmute, um, either just put me in the chat or use the Zoom reaction to, to raise your, actually let's put me in the chat because not everybody is on video. And let's go back to um, those. And while we're, we're, while you're thinking about who would like to, uh, who has a question that they might just want to go un, unmute themselves and 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 chime in. Um, let's go to the questions that have been coming up in the chat. And then, so this is the quick questions feature of of Stream Alive. Um, fantastic. Number four from Nina 
Gwen. Okay, great. So what happens if you have more than one activity? Do you circle around again, starting at number four, context? Okay, great, great question, um, Nina. Okay, so yes, the breakthrough arc, you can go through the st those steps. There is some flexibility to, you know, for example, that would be um, the, the steps for a group who potentially, you know, are meeting for the first time, they're doing a special event, you know, in, in house, uh, maybe they're doing a special strategy session or a all hands, or uh, maybe you're starting an online course and you'd want to spend in when you're, you're just starting a, a group process, it's particularly important to spend the time to create that safety, create that sense of safety, create the connection, build the connection amongst the group members. So often if it's like a first meeting and maybe it's the first of a longer course, maybe it's just a one-off session, but it's a group that's coming together for the first time, I will spend more time uh, upfront on, on doing those things. You don't have to, when you do more than one activity, if you're going to, toward the main activity, you don't have to go back to the beginning and start over again. In the main activity, what I usually do is start with a warm up to the activity. So maybe I launch a poll, you know, what's your comfort level? What, what comes to mind when you think of, you know, online facilitation and then do the activity and then reflect and then go back. If you're gonna do another activity, go back to um, just the main activity and reflection, main activity reflection, and then move through the rest of the arc. I hope that that, uh, that that answers your question. Great. Thanks for that. Would anybody else have a question about anything having to do with Stream Alive or uh, engaging your groups? And it's just a couple of ones I'll just take on very quickly. Are these slides like the quick questions and the maps and the interactions yes they're all part, part of stream alive powered by chat as you saw and uh feel free to take it for a spin streamalive.com uh we have a free account you can try it out right away and be up and running in the next minute or so so and you know how to reach us if, if we can help with something i think oops i clicked on the wrong link there but i think kevin had a question so kevin please go ahead hi thank you for the session uh, my name is kevin i work with actually ryan clover and maple who i know you know uh, well, and he loved your course, and I'm really excited to be at the workshop. Um, I run a bunch, a number of webinars for two educational environmental nonprofits. They're kind of education-focused webinars, and they're, they're they go great. But I would like to increase participation, especially in the Q and A, and kind of build a more sense of like community engagement during it. And so, one area that I'm really interested in improving is that transition from either uh, a presentation or panel discussion to the Q&A and like sort of priming people to uh, engage there. Um, I've tried reflections a few times, which worked really well, but I'm curious to hear what strategies you you recommend. Great, yeah. Webinars are, are, are interesting because you might not always know kind of who's coming into, into the group. Um, there is less, sometimes there's a less of a sense of, uh, I think people, participants can easily default into kind of just passive receiving mode, you know, um, as opposed to kind of showing up, really thinking about um, that they're going to engage necessarily with the webinar. So, um, and often what happens in a webinar is that we do have this like kind of uh, default design, which is the presenter talks, talks and talks and talks, and then you roll into the Q&A at the very end and then you end the session. Um, so what I would be thinking about, and if I was uh, leading a the, the the webinar and I you you wanted to kind of get more of a sense of connection and and engagement going throughout the, the session, is how to start straight away. So there's something that I call the early engagement effect. And you might have noticed that in this session where we launched the the, the uh, interactive map straight away. So there was just a couple of minutes where we're just waiting for some people to join and then Lux launched the map and invited everyone to start engaging. And what I find with the early engagement effect is that the earlier you engage people, the more likely they are to engage throughout your session. So um, 
So it's almost like engagement is like a switch that you really need to, you, you need to help the participants turn that switch on. You don't know where they're coming from. They might have been on Zoom calls all day and your webinar is one more hour on Zoom that you know they're now in autopilot mode. So you want to see see how you can kind of ease them into your session and and give them a first opportunity from the get-go to start engaging. Um, so that's one thing that I would be thinking about in terms of connection, Again, this is really fundamental when you're thinking about engagement, because when we feel like we belong in the group and when we feel connected to the other people in the group, we are more likely to engage. So oftentimes in a webinar, um, the assumption is that, you know, people are just coming in for an hour and then they're leaving. Um, you might not ever see these people who you've been in the webinar with again. Even if that's the case, I still focus on what are ways that we could even build a temporary connection, you know, in this group, a temporary community that we are together here for an hour. We might not see each other again. Hopefully we will now that, you know, we've put our links in the chat, um, but also giving people an opportunity to connect, to see who else is in the group. You know, we're, we're, when we, when as participants, we're coming in to a session and your audience is coming in with three things on their mind. They want to know if they belong in this group. They want to know if they can trust you as the facilitator. And they want to know if they're going to get anything valuable out of the session. So that's why it's so important, like to, from the very get go, to start giving people opportunities to engage to start connecting people. So we're, this is a webinar, so we didn't do breakout groups. We could have, um, but the, you know, the intention behind this webinar was really to showcase some of the Stream Alive features and to share some facilitation techniques. Um, but if I was in a group, I, you know, another way of connecting would be to do a, a breakout group early on in the session so that that helps people um, connect. That way, Kevin, this is a long-winded answer to that way when you kind of get those gears turning, you know, and that sense of connection, the sense of engagement, by the time you get to Q&A um, after having, you know, kind of given people opportunities to interact and engage, um, you'll be more likely to have people. People will have been more engaged in your session. So they're, they're you know, brain is firing in terms of they're they're engaging with your session because they want to because they're genuinely you know um feel like there there's something in there for them so i don't know if that answered your your question um but that is kind of those are some of the engagement techniques is that is that what you were looking for yeah, exactly. Thank you for the detailed uh, explanation. I think that helps a lot. Um, and yeah, it's, it's very helpful to think about these things. And I'll say to add context that both organizations that I do the webinars for have communities attached to them, but the webinars are open to a broader public. So you have an interesting mix of you have people in the community and people outside of it together. So the, the goal is to get the people who are outside of it kind of interested in the community. Um, so that's, it has a lot of those dynamics. So this was really helpful for thinking through that. Nice. Thanks, Kevin. Thanks for that question. Uh, Quinn, if you don't mind, I'd like to just add something to your sure. answer to, to, to Kevin. Uh, just from a technology perspective, Kevin, uh, wanna, this is a great opportunity for me to share one of our pet peeves with webinars, which is questions. And, and uh, let me just explain what I mean, right? Uh, by the way, big fan of what you guys do at Build with Maple. So, so kudos to you folks. And, and folks, you should check them out. They do some amazing work. Yeah. So Kevin, let's pretend you and I are meeting at a conference and we're chatting about stuff and life and, and work and everything in between. And then you ask me a question and I say, no, no, hang on, Kevin, that's a question. There's a room next door. You've got to go to that room and ask a question there because that is a question room, right? That, that would be absolutely weird. So to us, um, that, that felt weird on webinars because on, on you know, webinars structured as webinars, you have this Q&A tab. And I've been yelled at so many webinars for putting my question in the chat because you're supposed to put your question in the Q&A tab and not in the chat. So that's the other big insight we had as a company, which is keep things frictionless. You know, don't ask people to change their conversation, let them chat as people do. 
and technology should be able to figure out what they're trying to do. That's why we have that feature that that Gwyn was reading off, which is quick questions, which is literally picking up questions from the chat as opposed to asking people to go to a specific place to ask their question. Right? Uh, I love so feature list is a big thing for us, yeah. I love that feature. It's the first time I've actually seen anyone use it, and it's great. I've used the map before and the word cloud before on Stream Alive, um, but I haven't used the questions. I'm excited to do that. And usually. I have the same frustration with webinars. We we tend to do the Zoom meeting format, even for our webinars, just because that way people can come off of you and talk and stuff like that. Yep. So I mean, it, it, there's already something structurally difficult there because people have their videos off and their audios off, and we make it even more difficult by asking them to put their chat off in a way by going to some other tab. So take it, uh, I mean, do, do, do try it out. But if you don't mind, I'll just answer the quick, simple questions over here. Can we change the color palette? You can change everything. You can make the water shocking pink and the land orange if you want on the map every single thing can be changed uh i'm just going to answer that one Gwen, you had a question here that you might want to answer from dr ramya which is yes yeah thanks for that question dr ramya yeah what would you do if someone had their video on but is distracted on the phone or doing something else great question people get it's very easy for people to get distracted when they are on in online sessions as we know and i i know that also as a as a participant and somebody who leads online sessions. So to that, I would, I, there, here's, here's a few thoughts that, that come up for, for me, is that I try to make the um, expectations very clear um, before coming into the session. So for example, today, the, the, the emails and all the communication about the session is that it's going to be an interactive session. So that signals out, you know, we, we, it's not just going to be, you know, sitting back and, and listening. You can, you have the option of doing that, but the invitation is for it to be um, interactive. So the, the, the setting the expectations before the session, even for example, one of the expectations is that you have your camera on. You know, sometimes people don't um, have their cameras on because they say, oh, only a couple of people in the room have the camera on. Well, I'll just turn mine off. But if you can make those expectations as explicit as possible, you will see that people respond. Oh, OK, you know, this is a I'm supposed to have my camera on. OK, let's all put our cameras on and go on gallery view. Um, not on the one hand. Expectations before the session. Then at the beginning of the session, and this would fall into the, it could come at the at the closer to the beginning, but it, it usually falls in the context stage where you outline the agreements, the group agreements or the guidelines. Again, this can be done before the session, but I would highly recommend also kind of coming back to those agreements in the live session. So, you know, let me present some agreements to this group about how we can make the most out of our time. One agreement is let's turn off all the other devices that we have and really be present with this group. Why? The, 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 then it becomes very important to explain like, why would I do that? What is in it for me? Because when you do, you will get more out of the session, you know, and you will, you'll, you'll hear, you'll be able to contribute your ideas. You'll hear other people's ideas and we will get further you know, when everybody is, is focused. So those are some kinds of, of, of agreements that you can propose to the group. And you can also ask the group, what do we need in place? What do you need in place in order for this session to be as valuable as possible to you? And that often gives people the opportunity to contribute something where they feel more bought in to what is going on. They feel a sense of ownership. Oh, I've put an agreement out. Um, let's keep what we discuss in this session amongst us. You know, let's what is talked about here stays here. Oh, okay, that's a great agreement. Let's add that into the agreements. You've got the agreements and you will find like <clears throat> that people will feel more bought into than, okay, yeah, I have had a voice in this, and uh, I I feel more com committed to to being part of it, you know, and making making the session a success. Those would be some of my my the things that I would be thinking about, and that kind of prevents the situation of you then having to say, oh, 
so and so uh could you please turn off your phone you know and then that puts the person on the spot and generates a, a little bit of a, a you know different kind of dynamic than you might want to have great thanks for that question thank you gwen uh, i'll answer the easy one here will a recording be sent yes we will be sending a recording very soon in fact, just to remind everyone, we'll also be sending, so let me tick that question off. We'll also be, okay. We'll also be sending this list of any links that all of you have shared. So, uh, oops, it seems to have pulled it off right now, but we have all the links. We'll pull up all the links and send it out over here. I think some of you had some LinkedIn links. Yeah, there we are. We've got some LinkedIn links. Uh, so Streamer just pulls up all the links that anyone has shared and wants to share publicly, and we'll create a share document from this and send it across. So you will have a compilation of all the links that people shared, whether they are Amazon books, Spotify links, LinkedIn links, or 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 whatever. We're going to be ready to do the winning wheel, which uh, Nina has explicitly expressed that she would love to win. Uh, ready to do, do that <laughs> whenever you are. All right. Yes, let's do it. So anyone who contributed to that, the, the a challenge that they had leading online groups, let's run the winning wheel. And uh, I will be thrilled to do a one hour coaching call that you can use in whatever way you want, but we can work through the challenges. We can go through your session designs and, and see how we can uh, add some, some more engagement to that. Perfect. Lex, are you ready to run? I'm ready to run it over here. So uh, I'm just going to go here one second. Oops. Okay. Um, since I just ran it a little late, we should run it after we ran the transient thoughts. How about we just run it on everyone who's done it so far? We'll pick a couple of people. The first okay. one comes, we'll do to the next person. Does Perfect. That sound? Yeah. Uh, sounds good to me. I, I don't want to be hard on folks. I'm not going to say anyone who answered just three comments or two comments. Actually, I mean, it's fantastic. A lot of people have put a lot of comments. So. Let's, let's take anyone who put at least one comment in the chat, all right? So this is going to pick up anyone who commented at least once, which is all these names. I'm sure you can read them very clearly as they flash by on your screen, in which case you can stop going to your, opt your automat optometrist. This is a, an eye test in one as well. So we've got Rohit. <laughs> and well, Rohit will absolutely be grateful for this. Rohit is part of the Stream Alive team. So we're going to defer this. Uh, sorry, Rohit, I'm going to take the prize from you and defer oh. it to somebody else. So if you don't mind, we'll run it one more time. And if it comes to Rohit again, Rohit is part of our development team. We know that he's doctored and put a little <laughs> thing so that he wins every single event. It couldn't be past him. He's extremely talented. <laughs> All right. Danilo. Daniela, are you there? Can you are you able to to put your um, camera on? And if you aren't, no worries. But we uh, that's that's fantastic! Yay! <laughs> I look forward. I look forward to to our uh, session together. Fantastic. Um, good. So I just wanted to Lux. Is there anything before? Oh yeah. Just before we move to our closing, I know we're coming to the end of the session. We will close it out because that is the last and one of the most important steps. Anything else from you and Tina? Uh, it's, it's, I mean, it's, it's always fantastic to, to be in one of your sessions. We've had the pleasure of attending some of these. And, and I think Tina's attended a few as well. So I'll let her chime in over there. But as as two of the co-founders uh, here at Stream Alive, we've, we've got our third co-founder, Joe, in the call as well. It's, it's just magical and beautiful to see what you do with it. We like to think of what we've built as a canvas. And when we see people like you painting these beautiful pictures in your sessions with, with using Stream Alive, it, it just, it, it gladdens the heart. Let me just say that. <laughs> Great. Well, it has been a real honor to, to do this with you. It's just amazing to see how Stream Alive has, has evolved over the last uh, couple of years that since I became a beta tester. So um, just in closing, let's put in the chat, what is your biggest insight from this session? Um, or you could just also drop in your favorite st Stream Alive feature. So your biggest in insight or your favorite Stream Alive feature, if you could just drop that in the chat. And we will pull that up on the screen. 
just uh, Gwyn, in my excitement and and in my joy at what you did, I think I pressed the disconnect button over there and got streamer live out. So we'll just read it off the chat unless I get streamer. Okay, in. perfect. I mean, perfect. if it's not a perfect session, if, if there's at least one glitch. So this is perfect because we had one glitch. So so over to you. <laughs> <laughs> Great. Rahul, don't wing it, you stream alive and Susan QA collection. Yes. Dr. Ramya, word cloud. Sweta, definitely talking tiles. Rohit, talking tiles. Um, J L, I, I'm assuming that might not be the the <laughs> your first Joel, name. That's fine. Joel, well, yeah. Joel, thank you. Yeah. Okay, technology can be a stream continually flowing that helps people feel alive. That's beautiful, Nina. Even though I didn't win the wheel, yes. Okay, but we can we can still keep chatting, Nina. You and I. Uh, Kevin, stream alive feature the map. People love it. Lesson from the day, early engagement effect. Yes, Dr. Ramna in the session. Lux was operating stream alive. Yes, is it easy for a single facilitator to use as well? It is. I have I have used it in sessions where I have been flying solo, and it is very easy. Um, great. And Dan, the wheel, fantastic. So let's. I just invite everyone, if you can. Turn on your camera. We'll put ourselves on gallery view. If camera is not possible for you, let's unmute ourselves and say goodbye to this group in the very same way that we would say goodbye to a good friend where we're from. Okay, so adio. Adams. Thanks so much, everyone, for coming out and uh, and. Uh, good luck with your online sessions. Thank, Thank you, you, everyone. Thank this you very much, Gwyn. Group. Thank you. Thanks, Lux. Thanks, Gwyn. Thanks, Stream Alive team. Thank, Thank you, you, everyone. Thanks for joining us.